Sunday, so this is the last Sunday of the Epiphany season, which means that Wednesday, regardless of what the weather says, is still going to be Ash Wednesday. Now, the bigger question is, will we be having church on Ash Wednesday? And the question and answer is, it depends. So, uh, if school would get early dismissal, if there would be cancellation of Christ's light, uh, or anything in the evening, we will not have services on Wednesday night. So keep Keep up rest of things uh, by through KBRX or through our website, and uh, we'll let you know if there's Ash Wednesday service. If there is not 
Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday, we will have our Ash Wednesday service on Sunday, next Sunday. So we will kick off Lent appropriately, either on Wednesday, weather permitting, as we say in Nebraska, or um, on Sunday. So keep that in mind. Special welcome to our guests. Uh, glad that you're here. Uh, for those who are also watching on uh, Facebook, and those who are fortunate enough to, to watch, on, watch on KBRX. Uh, and uh, are able to be able to worship. So I know there's people listening from places like South Dakota and Western Nebraska, uh, and we're glad to have them and include them in our worship this morning as we celebrate the Transfiguration, a special day in the life of Jesus as he gets ready to head to Jerusalem to die for our sins. So we'll focus on that in our worship using Divine Service Setting 1. We are also blessed to have the Lord present. So as you are able, and our, our attendance card on the back there has our communion statement that will help you prepare uh, for Lord's Supper. And so come believing as you read that statement and receive God's good gifts, Christ's body and blood, for the strength of our faith and forgiveness of our sins. I believe that's all the announcements. Let's have a word of prayer to ask God to bless our worship. Lord God, Heavenly Father, each day is a gift from you, but this is a great day because we get to honor you by being in your house and being blessed by your your word and sacrament. May those uh, things sustain our souls, give us peace and comfort as we continue to serve you, as we anticipate Lent, Lord, we celebrate uh, and get a, a glimpse of who you really are as God. Uh, that transfiguration was an amazing moment uh, for the three best friends of Jesus, and also a chance for us to get a glimpse of your glory too. May that inspire us, bless us as we worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is uh, brightest and best of the stars of the morning. They're finishing up our epiphany season. We'll stand for the last verse. We'll come, let us worship the Lord.
drink our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read responsibly the intro for the day. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king is in, it, in his might, loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Today's Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 24, beginning with verse 8. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hands on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up in, on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly the gradual for the season. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Our epistle lesson is taken from 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand for reading the Holy Gospel and sing the Alleluia in verse. <laughs> serve as the text for the sermon this morning. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. 
And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next hymn, Tis Good Lord to Be Here. <coughs> and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of things as we get ready for getting ready for Lent, as you realize in our worship service, we won't be singing hallelujahs anymore. So our last hymn has hallelujahs that we will not sing again until Easter. One of the reasons we wear white on Transfiguration White uh, Sunday is because obviously the Transfiguration was a very bright event. Again, we won't see these colors again until Easter. And so we're doing some things that we're going to refrain from as we get ready to repent uh, through the season of Lent. We're also blessed with some flowers on the altar too. I want to make sure you notice of that uh, from the family of Joyce Stalkers, whose funeral was on Friday. So uh, the theme for the message this morning is the touch of the master's hand. If you've ever been to an auction... And I, I think it's fair to say that all of us have been at one time or another, if you live in this part of the country. You know that there's no telling how much something will sell for. Something that you thought would go really well, didn't bring in so much. And something you're like, they paid how much for that? You're like, what? Why would they spend so much money on that? Well, recently there was a black chalk sketch of a face with a simple title on it, head of an apostle. It was created around 1519 or 1520. It was auctioned off. 
its estimated value was between 15, 16 million and 24 million. Not, not too shabby. I'm sure a lot of people were bidding on that. Not. Uh, but because it was drawn by the Italian painter Raffaello Sancio de Urbino, which is a lot easier, a lot harder to say than Raphael. <laughs> Uh, Raphael, since he wrote, was the one that did that sketch, it went for a staggering $47.8 million. So obviously the touch of that master's hand was one reason it proved to be worth far more than the experts had thought. That sketch was made as a study for the magnificent painting titled the Transfiguration, which hangs in the Vatican Museum. Raphael's masterpiece actually tells two stories. We see in the upper portion of the painting the transfigured Jesus, flanked by Moses and Elijah. And like many older paintings, no one wears a halo in this one, but there is no need. All three are backlit by heavenly light. And all three are floating several feet off the ground. The apostles, stunned, are lying on the ground, barely able to raise their eyes. And then below, the same apostles in this painting speak excitedly to a crowd of men, women and children, about the transfiguration. This is where we come into the picture. Because it's not enough that something extraordinary happened. We need to tell people about it. Now initially, the three apostles who witnessed this revelation about Jesus and the transfiguration were told to keep a secret. Now that might seem odd since so much of the ministry of Jesus was public. But this event occurred at a crucial time in his life when it seems the Savior was trying to make it clear exactly what it meant for him to be the Messiah. So the transfiguration is in the third of a cluster of three events that Matthew, Mark, and Luke all relate. The first event begins with Jesus asking the disciples what people are saying about him. Dangerous question, I think, sometimes. Perhaps unsure of themselves and not wanting to give the wrong answer, they kind of beat around the bush. Jesus is said to be Elijah or a prophet from of old, or maybe he was John the Baptist, come back to life. But Simon asserts, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And in response... Jesus renames him Cephas, or Peter, meaning the rock. Not that Dwayne Johnson guy, different one. However, in the very next scene, Jesus reveals that part of being the Messiah involves a brutal death at the hands of the authorities, against which Peter protests. And this leads to a harsh rebuke from Jesus, who calls upon his disciples and us, to pick up our crosses, to follow him. And he also assures them in the midst of this dark prophecy that the story will end in glory. This leads to part three of this mini drama, where Jesus the Messiah is revealed in the transfiguration as who he has been all along, the Son of God. This personality of the risen Jesus, the resurrected Christ, is not something that happened only after his death. He was always God. And the transfiguration gives us a picture of his glory as that son of God. He was, he is, and he always will be the figure of glory long anticipated by the people of God in the Hebrew scriptures and in their yearnings and prayers. So for this special revelation, Jesus invited three apostles, his best friends, Peter, John, and James, to climb a mountain with him. 
Much as Moses took three trusted followers, we heard in our Old Testament lesson, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, up the path toward Mount Sinai, Jesus did the same thing. And there Jesus was revealed as a figure of light. And soon he was flanked by two glorious figures, Moses and Elijah, demonstrating unity with the Old Covenant. Now, of course, it's not uncommon for people who are climbing a mountain to enter a place where the clouds have settled. That is usually a foggy, even damp experience. Having lived, up, uh, went to high school up at, remember the World High School in Lake Arrowhead, California. We were a mile high, actually on the rim of the mountain. And so where our house was right behind the high school was always in a cloud. It was always foggy, almost like transfiguration to a certain degree. You, could know there, you knew there was sun behind the clouds, but you didn't get to see it. And, the, and those clouds on the trees around the house would cause it to drip. There was all this condensation that was taking place. A foggy, damp experience. So on the ascent, in our scripture reading, the apostles find themselves in a cloud of light, more reminiscent of the powerful presence of God revealed in the portable tabernacle, Again, a tent. We'll hear a little bit more about that in a minute. The portable tabernacle that they worshipped in in the desert. The fact that Peter suggests they build three tents in honor of the impressive people revealed in glory suggests that this is precisely what the gospel writer also had in mind. Hmm. The table, you know, the festival of tents. Remembering the tabernacle? They're doing that up on the mountain of transfiguration too. These symbols call to mind, again, that special Jewish holiday festival of temps or booth, which they commemorated the Israel's time in the desert, 40 years. And the image of the tabernacle is confirmed when the fiery presence of God is reaffirmed in the powerful divine voice from heaven that asserts, This is my Son, the Beloved. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. So in short order... Jesus is revealed as the Messiah, and then as Messiah who suffers, and finally as the Son of God who reigns in light and glory. There would have been nothing strange or unprecedented in the linkage of these images. The idea of a suffering Messiah existed as a Jewish idea long before Jesus was born. Many Jews looked for a human and divine Messiah who would, as a descendant of King David, take on the mantle of both Son of Man and Son of God, and whose suffering would restore the people to God. This means that this proclamation of the Gospels was not some radical innovation, but a return to the fundamentals of faith. Daniel 7 and Isaiah 53 are two of the foundational texts, but other ancient documents like 1st Enoch and 4th Ezra Make it clear that there's an expectation of a redeemer like Jesus. The question for first century Judeans was not whether there would be such divine human suffering Messiah, but whether Jesus, a Galilean, was actually that person. So at the conclusion of the transfiguration, Jesus tells the apostles to say nothing. Could you imagine you just had one of the most amazing experiences of your life. And you can't tell anybody. Wow. That would be hard to do, wouldn't it? But of course he says you get to tell them when? After the resurrection. I've got work to do first. Don't distract me or others from what I'm going to do as the Messiah. Suffer and die for all people's sins. And so this gospel passage... Uh, it, the painting that reveals the touch of a master's hand and our own retelling affirm this. And part of our response has to be the telling of the story. But more important is that we live it. In that, and then in proclaiming Jesus, we reveal that part of Jesus that is hidden, sometimes deeply, is in all of us. All have been baptized. Christ is in us and Sometimes we keep him hidden, right? But we want to get him out. That's why our hearts beat, right? Jesus is in there. He's trying to get out. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, he's, he's in all of us. We are, all of us, eternal creatures. We're not going to stop living. We're going to translate, 
like Joyce did, from this life to the next, but we will be also in heaven someday, bearing the image of God. We ourselves are transfigured, transformed by the touch of the Master's hand, of Jesus' hand. This ministry of revealing Jesus' presence can be difficult, but we must value each other as Jesus values all of us, even to the point of dying for us, and in his resurrection, raising all of us as well. This idea that our true worth is found in Jesus is a theme of a poem, The Touch of the Master's Hand. It's also been put to song. If you had a chance after worship to YouTube it, it's uh, Wayne Watson uh, who sings the song, The Touch of the Master's Hand. And this poem was written by Myra Brooks Welch. And it begins, "'Twas battered and scarred in the auctioneer, thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but held it up with a smile. The price of the violin rises fitfully, a dollar, two dollars, three, until a mysterious visitor walks forward. From the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as caroling angel so suddenly, the bidding of the violin skyrockets. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. What changed its value? The touch of the master's hand. And the poet goes on to say that the touch of the master, Jesus, transforms our lives as well. Many souls seemingly lost are saved by that touch. The story of the battered violin, whose value goes from three bucks to 3,000 after a master draws a wonderful tune from the instrument, was soon reprinted the world over, often without the author's name. It's been set to music, as I said before, Wayne Watson does a version of it. It was made into a film and reprinted thousands of times. But most people don't know the story of the author who was an accomplished church musician until she was robbed of her ability to play by crippling arthritis that confined her to a wheelchair. She turned to writing poetry by grasping a pencil in each gnarled hand and striking the keys of her typewriter with the erasers. She, too, felt the touch of the master's hand. She, too, despite her debilitating physical condition, was transformed, transfigured, and her words took on a life of their own. Myra Brooks Welch of Laverne, California, was paid 70 cents for the poem which was printed in February 26, 1921, in the issue of the Gospel Messenger. Why was her poem so popular? It's hard to say. Maybe many people have lives that are out of tune. Maybe they felt that, that they'd been sold short by the world, or think that their souls are slipping away, going, going, gone. Maybe the author herself said it best. I think God took it as he did the little lad's loaves and fishes and blessed it to his own praise and glory. We are all battered and scarred. We can be misunderstood, as Jesus was even by Peter. Rebuked him for standing stating he was suffering and die, but we're all commissioned, as was Peter, to do great things and to be forgiven like Peter, who denied Jesus three times during his time of trial. All it takes is a touch 
of the master's hands. So let's see Jesus clearly on this Transfiguration Sunday as the one in whom God is well pleased. And let's accept God's forgiveness for ourselves and our commissioning to work for him that he may be pleased with us as well. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> now may the peace of God pass all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship. So we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Our prayer response this morning is, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you revealed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son, who tabernacled among us in the flesh. Open our eyes, that by faith we would see him continuing the tabernacle among us in the divine service. Grant that we would heed your admonition to listen to him as he forgives and preserves us at the font, pulpit, and altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we ask for your blessing on this congregation, especially for our catechumens as they get ready for confirmation. As Moses was changed when he saw your glory at Mount Sinai, may we who have beheld your glory in the face of Christ also be transformed and given boldness of spirit to share your glory abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Moses and Elijah appeared with the Savior in glory, witnessing all that the law and the prophets speak about him. Grant wisdom to all pastors and church workers to open your scriptures in such a way that everyone would hear the voice of Jesus calling them to life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Heavenly Father, Bless the families of your church, that parents would teach the faith to their children, and that the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in all households. Remember also all expectant mothers, that they and their babies would be kept safe and healthy throughout their pregnancies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, we ask you to bless those who have birthdays in our congregation. We ask your blessings upon Emerson Proviance, Leveda Stanton, Meredith Creasel, Raylan Waterman, Greg Felker, Gracie Treptow, and Liam Winings. We ask you, Lord, to bless these your servants with special days, the celebration, and you're blessed for your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of love, we ask you bless all families and marriages, especially lift up to you, Lord, those who celebrate the anniversary of their vows made to you and each other. We ask you bless upon Phil and Connie Gildersleeve. May they grow more in love with you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with authority both here and abroad to serve with integrity and honor for the well-being of all. Grant that all division, conflict, and strife would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of all comfort, you alone bring the peace that passes understanding to troubled hearts. Remember the afflicted, especially with our missionary, Chelsea Irwin in Czech Republic. We ask you, Lord, to bless uh, Tim Reich's family as he's attending seminary in St. Louis. Continue to bless our congregation with willing servants, working with the ministry planning and core team, as well as, Lord, uh, officers to finish out our, 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 job, our works together. We pray for those battling COVID. We ask for prayers of comfort for the family of Joyce Stoliker. Thank you, Lord, that Jasmine Hevronic had a successful surgery. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be with those who battle cancer, including Julian Lichty, Karen Carlson, Mark Tin, Barb Weeding, Tracy Hedlund, Rachel Koloff, Elise Kelly, Rick Larson, Gary Rossiker, Beth Martinson, Carolyn Stewart, and be with, especially with Alan Benson who begins new treatments, and Ann Koopman. We ask you, Lord, as well as those we name in our hearts that you know that need your prayers. We pray that they would know your presence, taste your peace, and receive healing according to your gracious will, ever trusting in the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we praise you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Give us ears to hear your voice speaking through your word. Holy lips to receive Christ's blessed sacrament with repentance and faith, and holy awe at your glory granted to us in the means of grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your power is beyond compare and your glory beyond understanding. Open our hearts for you, to know you through your, the glory of your Son, whose saving will and purpose has rescued us from sin and death and made us your own people by baptism and faith. For to you, blessed and eternal Father, belong all honor and glory, worship and praise with your beloved Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. Normally during this time we'd collect the offerings. The offering plates are in the back of church there. We thank those who uh, bring their offerings during the week and mail them in. Thank you for your regular faithful offerings to continue to support our ministry. We have a few announcements this week. You already heard about the announcement about Ash Wednesday. Again, weather permitting, we'll have worship at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and continue that through the season of Lent on Wednesday night as we look at the the Chronicles of the Kings in our series. Okay. Just a reminder for the youth, uh, after church and Sunday school, we're going to have soup, cinnamon rolls, and sledding at 11.30. We're going to eat, and then we're going to go out and have some fun. Okay. Say that three times fast. Soup, <laughs> cinnamon, and sledding. Soup and okay. cinnamon. Yeah. Tonight is cards. We're going to say 6 o'clock so we can start playing at 6.30. We need everybody. And if your spouse does not want to come and play cards and you do, you can still come. Well, and Because I think sometimes people don't want to come if their spouse doesn't want to come. And we really just need people that want to have fun playing cards. So tonight at 6 o'clock, if you want to bring a snack, that's okay too. But cards tonight, pitch party tonight. What, what time? 6? Six? 6. Ish. Okay. Okay, Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. Just a reminder that we are currently taking applications for Leap Preschool, and we are over halfway full, so God Isn't is good. Amazing? We're excited. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah come join us. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Okay, Bible class this morning, we're going to take a look at the book of Psalms, 150 chapters. Question is, how many did David write? Choir minds want to know. Right, right. And handbells, weather permitting, we're planning on playing for Ash Wednesday. Okay. So if you don't play for Ash Wednesday, you'll play next Sunday, right? I'll we'll, we'll have to talk about that. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. We'll negotiate with that. Yeah, so Psalms, that's, you know, how many hymns do we have in our hymn book? I don't know, a lot. Uh, they had 150 in the Hebrew songbook. That's what the book of Psalms is. That's the Hebrew songbook. That's their hymnal. And uh, so we're going to hear about Psalms in Bible class today. Uh, other announcements for the week. Um, there's a Shrove Pancake Feed in Spencer. I got that location wrong. Uh, up in Boyd County, if you'd care to celebrate uh, the last day of not Lent. And um, uh, we continue to have, like I said, uh, elders meeting. We'll be taking weather permitting. And Lent and worship in Spencer will be taking place on Thursday, weather permitting. And I think that's all the announcements. Anything I forgot to remember? Good. 
Uh, as the offerings are brought forward, then I invite you to stand as we sing our offertory song, What Shall I Render? Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to the disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful, look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. times in all places. I am lost. Prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son to our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night as betrayed, took bread. When we give him thanks, he broke it and gave it to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, we all took the cup after supper, and when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. Now may his precious body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in true faith, the life everlasting. Go in peace and joy. Amen. We sing our post communion canticle. Thank the Lord. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refreshed us through this beneficial gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, we say, shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, Alleluia, Song of Gladness.